Lemon Amiga presents A Play Diet Video Menu Sit back and enjoy the show Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. In this game guide, we'll be taking a look at Lamborghini American Challenge, also known as Crazy Cars 3, developed and released by Titus Software in 1992 on the Amiga. And you can see Lamborghini American Challenge features two player mode, but Crazy Cars 3, this is the original game from 92, all you can do is enter the single player championship. From here we can choose our player character from one of the three in the game and we can either take the stock name or we can choose our own name or a label of our own desire. The next screen is the map screen and here we just have enough money to be able to afford the entry fee to five races. The five races are highlighted in gold and the ones we cannot afford to enter are highlighted in orange. So by moving that mouse pointer around the screen there, we can highlight those races, we can check out those opponents, and each race will have its own stock amount of prize money and its own entry fee. So it's our job to work out how to use the money to our best advantage. Our first course I am going to choose is New York. The goal is to outperform all our rivals. And there are a number of rivals in this Trans-American Championship. Up to three rivals can compete on any race with us and those rivals can be betted against and if we win the race we will collect those bets. So it's a good idea to raise the pot at this stage anticipating our first race win. At this stage our competitors will be rather weak and it shouldn't be any problem at all overtaking those guys in the race so there certainly isn't any harm betting against those guys and bumping up that prize money. Eventually our rivals will be cleaned out of funds and when this happens the game will continue on to the race itself after it has to be said a lengthy loading period. At the beginning of the game we start in Division 4 and we are given a very lowly automatic 4 speed gearbox but we can use the turbo. Yes by pressing the enter key we can maximize that power and we can use the turbo boost effect hopefully to get us somewhere at the head of the pack. You may notice the score there doesn't start increasing until we are at least in position 3 and then it will go by one point per margin which is usually a screen length and then you also notice in position two that will go by two points and because we are in position one at the moment we will get three points per screen distance to make our life a little harder on some sections in some races we will also find police presence and the police are there basically to pull us over and you can see a fender there is listed on the top of our vehicle that will not disappear until the end of the race and then when we start a new race that will be wiped clean and as long as the police don't stop us they won't give us a fine. 
so always be on the move and avoid the cops. Each race will vary in difficulty, but at the beginning, usually the races with a very low reward at the end will be easier, and if we check out our rivals later on, the rivals on the low rating will be easier to overtake in the race, and therefore we will get to the head of the pack and start earning score sooner. If you find a massive rival there with a level 3 power, then they will be difficult to overtake and harder to gain those points in the race. At the moment, I've managed to evade the cops and the other rivals, and we can simply cruise our way to the finish from here. You can see in the middle of the screen, a distance bar will be slowly ticking down, and when all that red disappears off that bar, that means we've entered the final stage, and then we will find a counter ticking down to the line. And there we go, the counter ticks down our final 200 meters, and all we need to do is cruise over the finish, and we have won the race. And then, after another lengthy loading period, we eventually make it to the results screen. From here, we can see where we made our results, and we saw we won that round. That means we get to win the prize money as well, and all the bets that we made along the way, which certainly increases our total funds. We are also given the championship menu, and just like Lotus, we can check those out. But unlike Lotus, we can face those 20 other championship drivers and we can check those stats out individually. Yes, each of those drivers will have different playing ability and it depends on our rivals as to how far we get in the race. Your rivals can even build up upgrades just as we can and they can upgrade their stats from division to division. We are currently on division 4, you can see in the bottom right hand corner there and so this is the lowest division out of the four in the game so at least this should be a little bit easier after that we get to tune up our car and basically fix our car's damage from the previous race and at the moment i'm just leaving 10 percent damage in the car because that won't do us any harm and back to the betting well, sometimes you can bet those guys up and have maybe 5,000, maybe 10,000 later on by betting those guys up. And after this, we'll be skipping the betting because it can take some time. But at the moment, you can see there, betting those guys certainly gives us the cash. New York is probably the shortest and the smallest race in the entire game, but from Boston onwards you'll find the track layouts are much longer and much more interesting. For this reason, later on I will be speeding up the footage, and I hope that doesn't cause too much discomfort, but that's basically because this game does continue for quite a while. At the start of every level, the first priority is to get through the first four guys to put us up there to position six, and having done so, the rest of the field will be spread out in front of us. Unlike Lotus 2, the cars do not meander, drone left and right, and we can even collect score there by hitting those traffic cones. Yes, the game does have different mechanics to Lotus, and it does drive very smoothly and play very fairly, and even gives bonus opportunities there by having traffic cones. Each cone will give 50 points, so collecting 20 cones will give us an extra 1000 points, and that's certainly needed in this game to collect the top scores. Each of the three rivals we betted against before the game began will have a rival symbol above their car, and overtaking those means we are guaranteed to collect their cash, as long as we win that race and stay in position 1 just like this. You can see the beach there is a little reminiscent of Outrun, but on the Crazy Cars 3, the updated version, which was called Lamborghini American Challenge, I think there was actually umbrellas on the beach which you could hit for extra score. But there are no umbrellas on this version. What we get are tunnels and an amazing tunnel sound effect. As long as we don't make any further crashes, then our position number one will be safe 
and the race can get a little boring after the player manages to get to the first position and therefore I'm going to speed up the footage on this and most of the other races as well because once we get as far as position one then that's basically all the action over so let's speed up this footage and take care of that distance each level and each race will have its own background graphics and side graphics and some things which are unique to certain races and we will certainly get to see weather effects later on. In this race on the horizon you can see a nice mirrored water effect as those skyscrapers are mirrored in the background and so a number of nice features in this game really helps the presentation. Taking a look at the league stats, we notice that Mary is now class number two and Mike there is also class number two. So if we find those guys on the map, so much the better. You can see Spokane there delivers a very high prize and it is probably one of the easiest races, one of the fastest races it has to be said in this division four. And so we will leave that easy race for now because we have discovered Mike there is about to race on Denver and Mike is a second class citizen and so we are a first class driver at the moment which means we are the weakest. Hopefully that will mean Mike will attempt to bet us under the table and because of our supreme driving skills we can outbet him and cream all that cash. A good tip to remember in the betting section is whenever they say now match this then match it. So if they bet 2100 credits, then bet 2100 and they will then be forced to raise the ante and that will clean them out. If you bet over the amount that they have currently betted, then they may chicken out of the deal and may walk away from the table without having the full contents of their pockets laid out upon it. So it's always best to underbet your rivals and then that cleans them out. So there we go, on to the next race, which is Denver. And Denver is actually, well, Denver in Colorado isn't actually a desert, but according to this game, it is. We find very nicely drawn cacti there and a very nice gradient effect background on the horizon. So copper lists have certainly been used to the best effect in this game. And you can see the game flows smoothly, maybe not as smoothly as Lotus 2, but still smooth enough on the Amiga. The four lanes of action there give us a nice wide road. And so if we make any mistakes, oh look at that slowing down there. If we make any mistakes, then we know it's our fault. We can slow down for these corners and that will have the effect of keeping us on the road. And unlike Lotus 2, those other drivers will also slow down for those difficult corners. And that means we can make headway without having to feel like we have to struggle to get beyond the pack. In this game, struggling beyond the rest of the pack isn't so hard as long as you don't rear-end all those idiot drones blocking our way. And even though this is a four-lane highway there, those other Sunday drivers that we'll find meandering around the track certainly do get in our way. And I wouldn't say they spoil the game, and they make the game quite monotonous sometimes, but just like Outrun on the Commodore 64, as long as you see those on the horizon, simply skip into a lane where they are not, and you'll have an accident free time. If you do crash then you'll lose a little speed and you will also accumulate damage. You can see the damage meter is clean there in the top left corner and it does take three or four knocks for every one of those damage points to accumulate so it means we can crash and bump without writing off our vehicle. You can see there I clid into the side of the chevrons and that did absolutely nothing to damage my vehicle. Yes, if you damage your vehicle all the way up there, your vehicle will begin to slow down and the handling will begin to be more difficult. So it is best if you don't get damage because that will not impair your driving ability. At the moment, having no damage whatsoever and a very straight road in front of us means we can pile into the sunset and we have absolutely no fear that we'll be overtaken by those guys, basically because we have burnt those into the ground. At this stage our car has very weak grip 
and unless we upgrade and buy those tires later on we will find our car slip slides around the track and we'll have an extra difficult time keeping that thing under control. On the map screen we can access the shop at any point and in the shop we can upgrade our vehicle and the most important thing to buy earlier on as far as I'm concerned are the tires. If we head back to the map screen and click on the shop that will give us a list of all the items which are available to buy and our cash reserves will allow us to buy a radar unit for a grand but in this case let's spend 15,000 on a new set of tyres. We can also buy the 5 speed manual gearbox, an engine tune up, the automatic 5 speed gearbox for slightly more and one extra turbo there will cost us $50,000 which is an absolute rip off for a turbo. Fortunately a turbo will guarantee us a race win so if we do buy one of those that gives us an advantage but buying turbos is certainly an expensive measure. Buying the tyres will not increase our class rating and so our rivals will not decide to bet lower amounts because we have the tyres, it will not affect our class rating whatsoever. So let's find Mike again, here he is, waiting there at Des Moines. And let's find that track and let's race against those opponents. Now that we are a few races in and our opponent there is on class 2 rating, you should hope to see the pot raised to at least 10,000 prize money with all four competitors there and so let's see if we can turn that into reality. Heading for an extra thousand for the race win certainly makes it extra worth it and adds an extra something to this game and betting on race wins is certainly unique to an Amiga game. So let's just speed that footage up again and get through the betting stage and then we can see more of the races. In this case the next race is a snow level and so buying those tyres before the race has never been more crucial. Yes this snow level features snow and is a really good snow effect. Maybe not as good as Losses 2 but certainly the trees there have got a good dusting of snow on there and even the plants by the side of the road can be knocked into and knocked over. Unfortunately you don't get any score for knocking those plants over but unfortunately bashing into those enemies there slowing us down but at least you can knock those plants over and that's an extra touch in the game. Completing this level without the extra tyres is hardship and I wouldn't even consider it without buying those tyres. Statistically the very right hand lane there contains the fewest enemies, the fewest traffic so if you can stick to the right hand side that sometimes helps but on this level definitely observe braking when trying to get around these difficult and long bends because if that throws us into the side then we can no longer catch up to those first two positions see there I have just done that and bang into the cops already and so the cops on this stage don't really make much difference but unfortunately our driving ability and our ability to stay on that road really does make a huge difference and if that happens then we'll find ourselves slow and overtaken and so yes the speed has to be watched on these corners you can't just career help the leather and hope you will survive best to actually break for certain corners and unlike Los 2 where we didn't actually break for any corners whatsoever this game requires the player to drive tactically particularly with police on our tail and you can see the damage really racks up there with a few police knocks so the level slip sliding us off there slip sliding away you can see just the right amount of throttle control and speed there to get us around those corners Otherwise, sometimes colliding with the back of those police cars doesn't do as much harm, at least not as much as colliding with the traffic, because the police are driving at relatively similar speeds to us. That won't slow us down much, but those other drivers really are moving slow, and that will slow us down to a grind. So let's speed this footage up again. You can see smoke billowing out of the back of our vehicle there, because we have over 50% damage, and that is slowly increasing. Every time we collide with the scenery, those police will catch up and it is possible to gain an extension of those police and drive into the distance and they won't be able to catch us up 
but if we do crash then we'll have to make use of other drivers there blocking the police and knocking those back and if the police collide into those vehicles that gives us a nice break and if we actually throw opponents into those police you can see the offender there will stay above our vehicle unless we collide an opponent into those police cars and then the opponent will then be the offender so shunting opponents around into police can help and you can see our top speed there is beginning to diminish because we have almost maxed out our damage bar and if that does max out then we will virtually end the race empty handed and unless we have some extra cash in the bank we will no longer be able to afford any extra races and that's game over Luckily we have two points of energy remaining and that's just enough to survive and get us on to the next level. And yes we made it in first place yet again. So come on Mike, cough over that money so that we can get on to that next race and continue our challenge in this division. So we can see a number of players are actually up to rank 2, class 2 there. And we will have to keep an eye on those and find out where they are. It certainly helps. So let's check out the map. Mike there is in Phoenix, Arizona, which is a very difficult track indeed. So we'll skip that for the moment. And Khaled there, he's often a very good driver. And you can see locals amateur there. That will mean that the locals are very easy to beat. And average players take at least the tires to overtake those. And you'll also find good rating races later on. But for now, let's pick Chicago. Um, because Capone is one of the uh, opponents there in the middle. Capone can often bet higher than the others, but because every season is random, you'll find the competitors are virtually random, and sometimes you'll find unexpected competitors getting further in the game. Of course, if we win every single round, then those other competitors will receive less money and less upgrades, and that means there will be less of a threat in the race. You can see the thousands really pouring into the pot and again it's great to have that money element in the game so it looks like the final position has decided to stand and that puts us into race mode in chicago the track is very winding indeed and it can be easy to throw that thing off and that delays us in our challenge to third place Remember, unless we get into that third place, we will gain no score whatsoever. And you can see the score is static in the top center there. We will not gain anything unless we are third or higher. So the tires, again, make sure that the weaving aspects of this track can be negotiated. And without the tires, the player will find progress harder. Although I have managed to complete the division four without buying any tires whatsoever you do require the upgrade gearbox and the upgrade gearbox is crucial for the later races particularly the hard races and the later divisions but the good races on this division four will definitely require the good gearbox and you can see us loitering around position five there sometimes you have to wait for those guys to make a mistake and they always slow down for those police checkpoints there we did not spend the four grand to get the police alert meter which beeps and flashes whenever we approach a police checkpoint and if we are moving slow enough you can see the offender has moved into the distance if we move slow enough then the police will label another guy the offender and they will not come after us so in this case that is what's happened and we can leave the police into the distance so here we are again in position one having cleared our damage from the previous race that only costs us 100 credits per block so it's only a thousand credits to clear all that damage away and so that hasn't really cost as much and so weaving around the track there unfortunately the tracks even though they do move smooth and fast even with this four speed gearbox well the scenery there is pretty samey and the same generic buildings and lamp posts there don't actually give a feel of progress and amazing depth it feels quite generic on some of these levels and all the player can do is weave around and concentrate on the horizon anticipating getting rammed at any moment so let's speed up this action yet again and avoid all those other drivers where possible so yes the depth of this game isn't as deep as lotus 2 but you can see the graphics do change from level to level and we've already seen weather effects there 
and so there is no fog level like Lotus but everything else is there and the road holding is fine particularly with the good tires if not then the inertia really stands up for itself the enemy AI there the intelligence is not bad and at least they stay in the correct lane and they don't weave around incessantly from side to side the opponents and the rivals do block the player and they do crash the player off and they do pose a significant threat if the player is crashing out incessantly you'll find the second position driver will overtake us before the line so we have to make sure that we do extend that gap unfortunately we do not know where the second position driver is unless he has a police car behind him and then sometimes the police sirens will give us a good idea of where the rest of the field are and as long as we can outpace and outmaneuver those police that means we can outpace and outmaneuver the rivals so come on Capone give us that money and let's move on yet again to another round nobody has moved up to class 3 which is fine as soon as they do that then that's the time to upgrade the gearbox but everybody's on class 2 along with me that's fine. So, on to another race. Houston is not the one for me. It is Memphis because it's hard. Miami is very easy. And the mountains there are very easy. Spokane and Portland there. And Mary is driving in Portland. Mary is actually a class 2 driver. So, avoiding Phoenix, Arizona because that's probably one of the most difficult tracks in the game. And you definitely need a gearbox for that. So it's worth spending time choosing the most opportune track and negotiating the best way towards the best deal. At the moment, it looks like an unopportune moment because there are no amazingly great drivers out there in the field to bet against, except for Mary there in Portland, which again is one of the hardest tracks. So although we have no class three drivers in the field, we will have to upgrade to the five speed gearbox to undertake Portland so let's enter that shop and let's buy the five speed gearbox you'll find the manual gearbox is a little cheaper than the automatic by two grand and so clever maneuvering around with that manual gearbox should save us some cash and give us the same effect that will basically price us out of all the other items and for half of the races on the map but we can still enter Portland for two grand and come out with a four grand profit Let's hope Mary will help us bid and increase that cash, but as you can see, she didn't, and it skipped completely the betting stage and took us straight on to the race. By holding down fire, we can accelerate, but this time, if we push forward on the joystick, that will up a gear, and if we pull back and hold down fire, that will drop a gear. If we pull back or narrowly, that will break us, and sometimes that will drop a gear inadvertently as well. But the benefit of having five speed gearbox is if we crash, we can simply drop that down into fourth and continue at relatively the same speed. So it helps us maintain our speed and the extra miles an hour there, we can see we are up to 300 kilometers an hour when we actually speed past those other drivers. So 304 kilometers an hour just gives us that extra speed over the rest of the field. You can see these night courses are a little more detailed and a little more atmospheric than the ones on Lotus 1 and Lotus 2. Again, the gradient copper sky effect is in the background, which is tremendously well done. Great gold color and the stars in the sky. A number of generic trees and the same columns there don't again hide the fact that the graphics on the side of the road are pretty samey but at least the road layout is pretty interesting in fact these night courses are very difficult and again the tires are crucial and probably by this stage I recommend the gearbox as well so I wouldn't bother upgrading to the tune-up because that will only increase our speed by a little and even though that will increase our acceleration, buying the tune-up is certainly not as worth as buying the gearbox. Even at this stage, the police radar trap for four grand, or a warning whenever the police are appearing there on the screen, buying the police radar is a waste of money, and buying nitros for 50,000 each is an incredible waste of money, and it's one of the things that the magazine reviewers had to complain about. So we'll get onto the magazine scores a little later on. For the moment, let's check out those rivals. Most of those are up to class two. It's 
should mean that a few of those will start to bet again. If we can't find a very good driver on a very good course, then we can always go for the easy courses, of which Miami is probably one of the easiest. And let's take a long look at Miami. You can see the game opens with palm trees there, pretty reminiscent of Atrum, and I definitely say this game is head and shoulders above the Atrum conversion that we got on the Amiga. Easy does it as we sneak around those first few competitors and that gives us a good line onto the rest and on this section we can find even more traffic cones there which will again give us an extra thousand per 20 collected. They will appear before and after these narrow sections which are very easy and sometimes I like to slow down for those cones and collect as many of those as possible. On average, the player can expect to gain 1,000 points from every race, particularly if they get into first position during the first two tenths of the race. If there are eight tenths of the race still to go, as you can see in that distance bar, then that means we can be online for the 1,000 points, but Miami, with all its cones, means we can actually come out with over 2,000 points, maybe even 2,500, if you manage to collect all those cones on this level. This contrasts with the New York stage where perhaps 600 or 800 points are able to be scored and that is the lowest scored race in the season. So other than that, all the rest of the races are worth 1,000 and because this is worth 2,000, the player can hope to score 16,000 by the end of the season and maybe even more than that. But 16,000 is the aim of this challenge and if we can score 16,000 during this playthrough then at least I can say I've had a good run of the game. You can see in the background there a nice effect with the bolts but there is no dual layer of parallax like there is on Super Hang On that we reviewed. There is just a single layer of scrolling in the background but again that superb cloud effect with the copper backgrounds actually make this game head and shoulders above most racers on the Amiga. So sometimes the player can be bored sat there in the first position, but at least this game is a lot more easy to handle than the direct predecessors to this, also marketed by Titus. You can see there Crazy Cars 1 is fast but with a ridiculously tight time limit. Crazy Cars 2, Ferrari F40 Pursuit Simulator is actually undrivable and comparing this to Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 there in the corner, you may notice Lotus 2 is smoother and without the turbo I'd say both games move relatively at the same speed. You can see the best part of Crazy Cars 1 is actually the game over screen and so let's fade those into the background. Meanwhile on the Amiga I am collecting the last few cones on my way to the exit of the level. I certainly like how the car can crash and the car doesn't stop dead like Lotus 1. If the car crashes into a palm tree then the car will basically be thrown back onto the track and sometimes if we are driving top speed when we crash then that will not detriment our top speed and our progress whatsoever. So just like Lotus 2, our progress will be bumped back into the centre of the road and as long as we don't dally on those corners and spend forever trying to get around those bends then the game can play fairly and will fling us back onto the track. At this stage we have just won another race but because that was an easy level with no opponents that doesn't give us the extra chance to clean up with the cash bets. So let's check out the opponents and you can see our friend Mike there is going up to class 3. So let's track him down on the map because we know a class 3 driver will be very cocky and he will bet the most money as a rival. So we found Mike, he's waiting there in the Mojave Desert and so the desert track is another winding weaving tough track which requires tyres and so we have the tyres and we have the gearbox upgrade. So at last this should be too much of a problem. We'll repair the last block of damage, not that that will be a problem, but basically because sometimes the police can be a problem on this level and the bends can severely write off our chances if we get it wrong. 
So let's take our time with the bets and try and get them all out of Mike. And again, you can see me matching his bet, bet for bet. And that's so that he won't run off screaming when I raise the ante and claim all that prize. So if we are the underdog, that means our chances of being bet are higher. And so let's speed this footage up yet again and get past the betting stage, which by this stage is maybe a little boring and certainly is when we want to get on to the racing action. So let's get past that. The loading times do not help either, but at the end of the day, when we finally get into the races, you can see ice there. It is no longer snowing, but this is an ice level, and you can see the mountains in the background from Monument Valley. So unlike Beach Volley, who managed to put the American levels in Australia, we at least get to see these American levels. Although, again, I haven't seen the Monument Valley covered with a sheet of blue ice like it is on this level. So it looks like we are traveling across a frozen lake and it might have made more sense to cover this white. And then that would be more like the speed trials rather than the slow progress we are making at the moment. But you can see the levels are pretty samey. And as long as we get beyond those few drivers and get into first place, then the rest is pretty boring and sometimes yes even at this stage the races can be boring when we sat there in first place avoiding all those other drivers and it doesn't really make much of a detriment if we collide with one or two of those in division four although it certainly will do when we upgrade as we shall see later on to division three the next race I will be choosing from the map is actually one of the easiest races, if not the easiest race in the entire game. Spokane looks like it's in Washington State area, which is above Oregon, and it's in the corner there of the American map. Well, Washington State is not very flat, and there are quite some hills there, and the Spokane territory in the Rockies is quite hilly so we should be able to get a lot of speed from that level and we can even complete the level even without the tires even without the five speed gearbox so let's head on to that level and see how hard that would be from the start you can see this is another night course and even though it is relatively easy to get beyond the pack we still need to be on our toes because on the left we are about to see a few cones and we need to be collecting those cones if we need the highest score in the game. And then the road will narrow and take us on to a two lane highway. This fast lane over the Rockies then becomes even faster because as we plunge downhill, that will automatically give us top speed for free. And that means we can get past all the other drivers pretty quickly. Again, if we can get into first position, while there are still eight tenths of the race still to go, that gives us the best opportunity to gain those points. And look at that, the road, even with those good tires, the road's still managing to throw us off, and there is absolutely nothing we can do about that. And only just giving us enough space there to squeeze by that traffic. But again, if we are traveling too fast on those roads, the road will bump us back into the road surface and on this level there really is no two ways about it the level is pretty long and as i say sometimes when the player gets into the first position they might find the level is a little boring and not as frantic as if they were trying to move through the field but all that changes in the higher divisions being the lowest division this division four really gives the player a break and this basically encourages the player to progress in the game and introduces the player to all the elements that the game will require of them later in the season. At the end of the entire championship, as we shall see, we can actually save the game up. But because it takes at least an hour to get through these first 15 races, the player will still have to sit there and bear some dedication to get progress in this game and if they don't complete the races, then they cannot save the game up, and that's the entire game as a write-off. Luckily, that's another easy race win from us, 
and segueing into the 64 version you can see the Commodore 64 actually has interlaced graphics which was something that was supposed to be impossible on a Commodore 64 and yet they managed it from the title screen we can choose any driver in the game not just the three and that will give us the full name of those drivers and look at the interlace effect there on the map screen the Commodore 64 was not designed for interlace and as far as I know Crazy Cars 3 is the only game that makes use of it but it certainly does flicker and it's certainly not as good as the native Amiga but it does try its best when it comes to the presentation screens to match the Amiga and as far as I'm aware the Amiga version came out first so let's compare the same level of both machines and you'll see on the 64 it virtually starts straight away the scenery is much plainer and the backgrounds are much plainer and to add insult to injury on the Commodore 64 it looks like a two lane highway is the standard requirement yes at no point does the Commodore 64 ever widen its roads from a two lane highway and you can see these cars are moving relatively slowly the only good point is the fact that we have eight turbos on the Commodore 64 so if you use those then at least the game speeds up and becomes playable without the turbos the game is very slow and boring and avoiding those cars very slowly and boringly on the single lane highway there is not a great advert for the Commodore 64 so they did manage to cop that up but it's still better than Crazy Cars 1 and 2 on the Commodore 64 and both those on the Amiga so I certainly would not recommend players check out the Commodore 64 version of this game but at least it's not the worst Commodore 64 racing game out there on the Amiga we have crashed a number of times and that means that we are now in second position and all we can do at this stage in the race because the opponent there the rival is very fast indeed all we can do is tag that guy's tail and hope that he collides with some traffic and that knocks him back when that happens just like Lotus 2 you'll find a pinball effect and you'll find the car ricocheting back in our direction pretty damn fast so it's a good idea to avoid the back of those cars but if we do collide into an opponent, again, that will not slow us down as much as colliding into the traffic. So we can ram the opponents and bash those without too much damage. And sometimes that is a neat aspect of this game. You can see Mike there is our major benefactor and at the moment he's our only major benefactor and so on the next race we can see on the stats menu Mike is actually class 3 and we are class 4 so checking out the map let's find where he is and he's hanging around Minnesota there the actually chilly Minnesota for most of the year in the north there by the border so we know that track is going to be slippery and as Mike is our benefactor, let's use him and investigate the possibility of even more cash rewards. As far as I know, the Amiga version is the original version and the Titus team also ported this across the Amstrad CPC, the PC-DOS, the Atari ST and as we have seen the Commodore 64. Titus was a French developer they had offices in Paris in France and also extra offices in London, LA, Madrid and Tokyo but unfortunately Titus Interactive Entertainment was closed in 2004 having filed for bankruptcy. The code in this game was created by Jean-Michael Masson and Richard Hopper who both went on to Lamborghini American Challenge two years after this in 1994. The Lamborghini American Challenge is identical except for the main title music and the main title screen and the two player option. Richard Hopper also created the music and the sound effects for this game as well as Lamborghini American Challenge. So he served as a dual coder and musician in this game. The graphics were co-created by Didier Carrier, Florence Moreau and Francis Fournier and they all went on to Super Cauldron in 1993. You may remember Titus's other classic games on the Amiga, including Titus the Fox, the Blues Brothers, 
and a little game called Prehistoric. They also went on to create the Fire and Forget games, which were actually pretty forgettable, and so Titus, this was probably their greatest achievement on the Amiga. Back on the Amiga, you can see I'm crashing out incessantly there in first position, and if we maintain the highest top speed, you can see even if we fly into the scenery, that doesn't really slow us down much. And the police will give us an extra punch, and that will actually speed us up even more. So sometimes the police can do things in this game which can actually help, but if we fly too far off there, sometimes we'll have to slow right down, and that makes life tougher. So I've managed to get away with it yet again, and those frozen plants there will give us absolutely zero points, and zero incentive to knock those away. And Frankie, one of the 20 other opponents, has bombed out. Yes, the opponents will upgrade themselves and they will drop out of the championship. And so we must make sure that we are above those if we want to qualify for Division 3. You can see there, there is only four races remaining. One of those is a very tough race against good opponents and certain police. Let's have that. This game came on two discs actually three floppy disks for the Commodore 64 and sometimes the loading times can drag the game experience down a little bit but they equate roughly to the long loading of Lotus 2 so that's not too bad. We certainly have many more activities available than Lotus 2 and later on when we reach the higher divisions we will see even more races with even more varied landscapes. There is no music in the game and all the player can do is have the sound effects. Yes there was music in the 64 version which is actually tremendously well done and is probably the best part of the entire game. On the Amiga the sound effects are actually chunky and actually flash out the game much better than the vacuum cleaner engine noises that we found on supercars and Lotus 2. Fortunately we do not get as many trackside obstacles as Lotus 2 get any river jumps to jump over, not like Buggy Boy, there are no cars appearing in the opposite lane which we could crash head on into and there are certainly no flags or power ups or time pills or turbos either. What the game does have periodically is a police checkpoint and you see the police there have actually taken a photograph of our highest speed and we shall receive a fine at the end of the race. The game has one or two good points and those points are different from other driving games certainly no police radar checkpoints there waiting to snap our top speed and those will appear more frequently on the later levels at this stage we have lots of money so it doesn't really matter and although you can't see the money there in the race screen we do have a fortune by driving on these tracks so luckily the score is piling up and after all the divisions are complete, we may have hundreds of thousands of score. 12,000 is the score that we have at the moment, and as I say, the maximum is probably 16,000 per season. You can see the extra zero on the high score table enables us to anticipate the millions of scores, but I don't think that you can have a million score in this game, certainly not 66 million like you could have on Moses 2. So, well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to speed that footage up again because on this Division 4 it can get pretty lonely there in first position and we shall certainly see in the higher divisions that becomes more of a challenge. You see the police there, look at that damage really piling up as we enter the last few metres towards the line. So, let's get to a halt and take out those bushes. Two hundred and thirty-six kilometers an hour, and for that we gained six hundred five, which is fair enough, because we actually made quite a few thousand, which is on the wagers, and we gained another hundred thousand from the race. Let's check out our opponents. You can see I'm leaving Phoenix, Arizona, there until last, and Nashville is pretty difficult as well, so that leaves Houston. 
Houston is quite a difficult race basically because it's a wet race so let's repair all our damage on the car and the sumo unfortunately does not bet very well and let's see what we make at the start With a little help from the downhill section that increases our speed and that puts us almost straight away up there into well second place it won't be long before we find the leader and so this wet race isn't as tough as i anticipated the chevrons there mark the very toughest bends and if you can take those curves tightly we won't lose that high position and the other opponents there petering along driving very amicably there at least they stick to the lanes as i say and then it becomes basically a duck shoot and if you are in the right lane then you'll get past those guys absolutely no problem with the manual gearbox it becomes a little more tricky but that is no harm to master and you can see they're even making amazingly wild jumps there on um, dips in the road are possible and you can look at that second place there bumping me ahead you can make tremendous maneuvers in this game and it's a bit of there isn't more jumping action going on but maybe there is more of that in the later level and so this game does take time to play and thank god there is a save at the end of each division otherwise this game would be impossible and thank god there are 15 races on every division and that makes these varied and interesting obviously select those in any order not a pre-arranged order like lotus and so unfortunately there are no pit stops like lotus which spices up the action but here we are back on the map screen and our penultimate race as it turns out is nashville and so let's get on into that felicia is there waiting for us and i don't think she's gonna bet much money either and so let's see and no she'll stand me up typical i'm being stood up so on to the race it's another night race and i recommend the tires again for these night races they aren't my favorite races but unlike lotus we do not have a field of vision a fog of war there on the horizon blocking our view no the screen colors are simply dimmer because they've used a different color palette so the Amiga's 16 color option there on this game really not put to great use on this level and no headlights either which would have been a great bonus feature but what we do get is well the cars do get lighter as they appear on our side of the track and you can see the tremendous thrill and dexterity the player has to maneuver around all these cars and all this traffic so sometimes they do and sometimes they don't the controllability and the handling of this game is right on par with the best and with the best steering the best brakes and the best tires then the game really does become highly maneuverable but on these lower divisions sometimes with the weediest tires it can be a bit of a drag hauling that thing around the screen but it is certainly easier than jaguar xj220 which really did have laggy draggy controls and so basically it has better speed better graphics, better handling in general. And game music wouldn't have done this game any harm and more things to do later on in the level, more wow factors like the big jumps for example would have been bonuses and pickups and money and things like that along the way but they didn't and that was a missed opportunity. So getting back to the last of the stage and Let's pull on over and let's see what we made of that. First position. And 20,000 in-game dollar credits. So let's scoop up that reward. You can see everybody else in the division is out. And so that only leaves one more trek and that's Phoenix. So let's repair our car for most of the way. And let's leave the plains of Nashville behind, the very wet plains. And no marshes again in this game, but no sinkable pits either. If you go off the track, you won't sink into the desert and there are no tumbleweed. 
so there are a lot of features this game could have had but at least we get the smooth driving and at least we get the fast action so we've managed to get through those cars and the worst thing about this level is the very steep corners so as soon as you see those chevrons it can be a good idea to gear down into fourth or at least brake and then that means if you do hit something you'll be traveling at less of a velocity and a less of a speed which means you can regain that top speed even more quickly sometimes on the very worst bends hanging around there in fourth gear can help and on the snow level i've been known to do that entirely in fourth gear and that has helped as long as we match the speed of the leaders no matter what speed that is going and i've passed that like it's standing still there the leader's car usually travels on this division four around 260 miles per hour so if we can get up there into the 270s and 280s then that should mean that we are fast enough to outmaneuver that first place guy and as i say the police will give us a fair warning and if the first place guy is somewhere around the back of the police then that gives us an audio cue as to how far we need to get in the game so let's finish off this last level in first position let's rack up that score beyond 16k and 16.1 there and not so much damage after all sometimes the police can really damage our chances and write that off and the police can hinder us but if we avoid that traffic and avoid the police they will appear in the left and the right hand lanes so if we stay fairly central and we avoid those when they appear then the police are absolutely no problem and as i say if we bump an opponent into the police then that will make them the offender in the meantime we have one star remaining on the map which is actually the division challenge in order to enter the division challenge we must buy a pass buy three passes there for 50,000 which is as much as a turbo let's buy those three passes and that gives us three opportunities to take on the virtually end of level boss in this game and if we pass this then it's on to division three let's repair most of our damage and let's continue it is often a good idea to buy a turbo and at this stage if we have a turbo in hand that means this level is virtually in the bag unlike the other levels this level is actually timed and we also have to avoid oncoming traffic if we stray into the middle of the road that will slow us down so we have to be brave and weave in between those trucks and avoid the oncoming traffic at all costs unfortunately i don't think those skulls in the middle of the road give us any more bonus points whatsoever would be nice if they did and if we make the mistake of trying to outmaneuver those guys in the wrong lane that will be severely penalized so you can see there the time is ticking down and we have over half the distance still to go is it possible to get there well with clean driving all the way to the finish it certainly is possible and as long as i don't make many more mistakes after this and so the division challenge with its time limits and oncoming traffic it does make up for those deficiencies in the main levels and these will get harder as the game goes on these might appear pretty easy at this time but actually the time limit is very tight and without the turbo on my side i'm making a meal of this and so the distance is falling down there 15 14 13 seconds to go am i going to make it well fool's paradise there nine seconds eight seven and well we just have enough seconds to make it well two seconds there we screech to a halt bump congratulations you are now eligible to compete in division three at this point the game also allows us to save our progress to the disc so the next time we load the game we can resume our progress unfortunately only from the very start of each division before we check out one of those 15 race stores on the map we can also enter the shop and we will find in here well we still have the basic police radar to buy we also have the tune-up extra tires and the extra brakes there which will come in handy later on let's just buy ourselves the police scanner and we can also in there buy ourselves the turbos for the same 50 grand we 
you certainly cannot afford those and if those were a little cheaper it would have been better for this game and even on the Commodore 64 we were given eight turbos from the start on this game we are only given one you can see there we've made it to Boise Idaho and apparently Boise is an American desert and well it probably was in the 1930s having gone through what was known as the Dust Bowl but that was mainly due south of this location so for some reason they expected this to be a desert plain full of what looks like Weetabix on the horizon and it's our job to negotiate beyond those Weetabix but you can see even at this stage the programmers are not shy of delivering a brand new level format and that certainly helps the longevity of this game these difficult corners really are difficult at this stage and you can see I'm losing a lot of speed simply by veering off the road. There are no roadside barriers on this level so if the player should veer off there is no protection. You can see the AI of the opponent rivals has certainly taken up a step from the previous level and with the power upgrade we bought the spanner tune-up option and that gave us an extra top speed which in this case is 320 but if we should select another track in this case Wyoming we will find exactly the same track as Spokane earlier on it's identical it's a night track with cones either side which lead into a single lane with tunnels after that so unfortunately it's exactly the same level except for the opponents which are slightly harder this sameness does affect the scores the one gave this game 69% complaining that it was too tough and there were too few nitros the Amiga Joker magazine gave it 70% Steel Amiga gave it 71 Lemon gave it 79% on the Lemon Amiga website and Amiga Computing gave it 85% Zero and Amiga Power gave it 88%, Amiga Action gave it 89% and good old Amiga Format gave it 93% in issue 38 in September 1992. 93% because they said it was stunning, amazing durability and certainly harder than both Lotus 2 and Jaguar XJ220. So with an average score there of 8 out of 10, that makes this game certainly highly recommended and certainly playable. Thank you once again for reviewing an amazing play guide and review. Look at that squeeze through the traffic there. Hope to see you again in another play guide sometime soon.